In this video, we'll introduce the expected code word length of a symbol code as a measure of how much compression a given code is achieving. So let's go back in time again. Suppose that you're Samuel Morse back in the 1830s, and you're trying to design a code that to be used for telegraphs. And you'd like for your code to be efficient in the sense that for a given message that you would like to convey from you know, when one end of the wire to the other, you would like for the encoded message to be as short as possible. In other words, you, you want to get good compression. You want to compress the, the original message. So let's say that you've already decided that you're going to use a symbol code. So you know you have, you know, you're going to choose some symbol code, some function from from x to a star, and so x would, in this case would be like the alphanumeric, you know, all the letters a to z and all the numbers, all the numerals 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. And this would be, you know, for example, like zeros and ones, you know, for 0 for off and 1 for on. Or maybe you d dots and dashes, you could take dots and dashes too. So how are you going to measure how good a given code is in terms of its compression? Well, we, we, what we were just saying is you want the, the encoded message to be as short as possible. But of course, you don't know what the messages are going to be ahead of time. You have to design your code for all the messages that are going to be sent. All that you know is that the messages are going to be in English, or you assume that at least. So it seems like the best thing to do would be to aim for making the encoded messages short on average. And this is where the probabilities come into play. So earlier we defined a discrete memoryless source, so we're going to introduce a discrete memoryless source now. So let's let x be a random variable, a discrete random variable, with probability mass function p. So p is the PMF, and let's say x is taking values in script x here. So in other words, i.e x has PMF P, or we could also say the same thing, that the probability that x equals little x equals little p of x. All ways of saying the same thing. And now consider the discrete memory list source in which we take a sequence of random variables, x1 to xn, say, and each of them has this PMF P, and they're independent and identically distributed. So now we need to introduce a little bit of notation, some notation for the length of strings. So this will just be a little, little notation. So if we have some string, let's say alpha, alpha one up to alpha k, say, in, and it's a, a sequence of symbols from our code alphabet. I'm gonna use A for our code alphabet. So a star is all those strings. So if alpha is this string, and here, of course, you know, alpha i is, well, maybe I should say that. So if that, where alpha i is in A, is in our code alphabet, then I'm going to use the following notation, this sort of absolute value looking thing, for the number of code symbols in the string. So that would be k in this case, because there were k, uh, k symbols alpha i in our code alphabet in this string. OK, just a straightforward definition. So maybe just a brief example in case that wasn't you know, probably pretty clear. But let's say you know, maybe alpha is, is 01101. Then, then this notation would mean 5. And you know. In this case, A would be like the set zero and one, but if you know A could also be the set, say, you know, so this would be where A was zero and one. Another example, alpha could be like, you know, A could be say a different set, zero one two three whatever. Maybe just maybe just has three values, and then this would maybe we have some other strings one two I don't know two zero one, something like that, maybe another one. So then the length of that would, of course, just be six. Okay, I think you get the idea. 
And another little piece of notation that will be convenient is we're often going to be working with a particular code. And sometimes we'll use this little l of x, this is my little l, to denote the length of the code words of that code. Remember that the code words are all the all the, the values c of x, all the strings c of x. And so when I put the absolute value looking things here, that gives us the length of that code word. And I'm going to denote that length by l of x. So if I, you know, usually I'll be clear about what code l corresponds to. So for example, maybe give you another quick example. So let's say our code, was, we just have some simple code. c of a is, say, 0, and c of b is say, uh, I don't know, 1, 0, and c of little c is 1, 1, then what would we have? L of a, L of a would be the length of this code word, which is 1, L of b would be 2, and L of c would also be 2. Okay, so that's all. So we have these two little pieces of notation here. Boom, boom. And now we are ready for the definition of the expected code word length of a code. The expected code word length. Sometimes people just say the expected length. The expected length of a code or the expected code word length of a code C for x for script x for our for our uh, source alphabet is we'll denote it by this just a capital l and it's just the expected value which is l of x the sum over all the values little x l of x p of x so this is just the expected value of so it's just the expected value of this random variable if I put a capital X in here, remember, capital X is, is our random variable here. This is our just our, our, our one discrete random variable, and then we took a sequence that looked like that. But we can just denote it this way. So that, that it's the expected value of this random variable. And of course here, maybe just to be clear, L of X in this case is the length of the code word c of x. So that is the expected code word length. And this gives us a measure of how much compression we're achieving in a code, in a symbol code. So a shorter expected length, of course, means that you're getting, you're getting greater compression on average. On average, the length of the code words is smaller. So let's do a couple examples just to so let's look at look at those are we have our, our running examples of some different codes and let's see what the expected code word length is for those so we had our maybe I'll maybe maybe I'll pause and co uh, copy and paste from the, the our code from the other ones okay so I'll I'll pause for a sec actually no I think I'll just I'll just rewrite them here so we had our two codes remember we had a maybe I'll put a here and a we have x because now I'm going to add the probabilities. So let's put the code word. X, each, uh, each source symbol, its probability, the code word, and the length of that code word. So we'll just make a little table here. So X, in our little example from before, took these four values, A, B, C, or D. And let's take the same probabilities, 1 half, one quarter, one eighth, one eighth. And we had the code words zero, one zero, one one zero, one one one. And of course the length of these is one, two, three, three. And now let's compute the expected code word length of this code, or the expected length. So I'll just plugging into the definition here, we have you know one times one half plus two times one quarter, plus three times one eighth, plus three times one eighth. 
So we get a half plus a half plus three eighths plus three eighths. And so we get one. Uh, six eighths is three quarters, so that's 1.75. All right. So we got. So that's just a little example to compute the expected code word length for that one. Not too shabby. 1.75. Let's do another one. Let's do the. Let's do our example B. So here we had. Let's take the same probabilities. We also have A, B, C, C, and D. And we'll take the same probabilities. 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 eighth, 1 eighth. And now our codes, our, our code words were 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1. And so, of course, the lengths are 3, 2, 4, and 1. And what is our expected length? Well, I'll just plug in the formula again. So we have the sum over all the x's, sum over a, b, c, and d of length times probability. So what do we have? We have 3 times 1 half plus 2 times a quarter plus 4 times 1 eighth plus 1 times 1 eighth. So what's this? This is... Uh, this is 1.75 or, or 1 1.5 plus 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 eighth. So what do we get? We get, we get uh, 2, 2 and a half, 2 and 1 eighth. So what's, uh, wait, did I do that right? No, two, 2 and a half, two, yeah. 2 and a half plus 1 eighth is, uh, what's that? 2.625 because 1 eighth is 0.125. Okay, so that's the expected length for example B, and it's significantly longer than than this, almost a whole, almost a whole bit longer on average. Because the, the length here, right? You 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 might measure, you might uh, give units to this in in terms of bits, because in this case, at least our code alphabet was zeros and ones. So the the length of this is about one point seven five code symbols and it's in this case they're they're bits so it's about 1.75 bits on average so those were just two simple examples to illustrate the expected code word length of a symbol code and i have a question for you a little challenge of, you know not too hard maybe but well it's maybe a little challenge is can you come up with a code which is better than this one better than this this code a and if so, what is it? And if not, why not? So that's a, that's a challenge for you to puzzle over. Okay. See ya.